Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off Grid Knives Black Stallion, a very large, robust Warncliffe flipper. Very cool. Uh, this is the box that it came in. I like the, uh, I, I definitely like the boxes for the money that they, you know, that they cost. I'm really, you know, impressed with the box. I'm going to invite you guys to check out offgridknives.com. Check out their Instagram. Um, absolutely. I will be linking this guy right down in the description as well as off grid knives in general. Uh, if you're not familiar with my channel or the knives that I've reviewed, um, I review a lot of knives. Knives that cost anywhere from, you know, like 20 bucks all the way up to about five grand. Um, so I like a wide variety of different things, and I've reviewed many off grid knives. I've had a really, really good experience with their quality. I've also had a very good experience um, with the gentleman uh, behind Off Grid Knives. I talk with them on Instagram a lot. Really cool. They use a couple different uh, OEMs. I know like a lot of their higher end stuff like the Scorpion is done by Wii. And knives like this, this guy, I believe the OEM is Best Tech. And it shows. Best Tech and Wii are excellent OEMs. They do really high quality stuff in different price ranges. So, and this guy is no exception. It's absolutely made well. We're going to talk all about it. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you guys are enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and uh, you'd like to support me and get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's, of course, a link for my Patreon right down in the description. Your support means the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. This is not a small knife. Absolutely not. Overall length of the black stallion coming in at eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade length, you, yeah, you could say 3.75 inches of blade. Cutting edge is coming in just shy of three and a half, about 3.35, something like that. There's an area up here plus a good size sharpening choil. A difference between blade and cutting edge there. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. We are at an angle right here, so it's looking like they're the same, or perhaps this guy's a little bigger. But the rat is just a little tiny bit longer. This guy is substantially taller, as you can tell. A <laughs> very tall blade. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Just about nicked myself with the Ritter Hogue, but we're good. 7.25 inches overall on the Para 3. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action on the sky? Um, with uh, the OEM, to my knowledge, being best deck, it definitely feels best decky, and by that I mean very good. The blade has a lot of weight and mass to it. The flipper tab is pretty large, but it is nicely knocked down, and the jimping's in the right place, right? So approaching this, uh, you know, as a push button flipper or as a light switch flipper, it doesn't matter. It's good. Access to the liner lock is very good. Uh, the flipper tab comes down, contacts your finger, allows you to get your hands out of the way, and it's nice and smooth. This is running on bearings, and it is almost fall shut. See if I can just, yeah, you can pretty much get it to fall shut. That's mainly due to, it's very, very smooth, but it's mainly due to the fact that we have such a large, heavy blade. In any case, it's satisfying. There's no, you know, spot on here that's uncomfortable to the hand. You can do this all day. It's pretty, honestly, it's pretty cool, you know, having a blade this big that is able to be manipulated like that. This is great. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check, get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description of the video you're watching right now. Pivot is going to be T8. Yep. And the body screws are also T8, which is fantastic. Thank you. There are three of them. I prefer a maximum of two, but honestly, I'll take additional hardware over T6. I'd rather have three body screws on each side that are T8 or bigger than two body screws on each side that are T6 or smaller in a nightmare scenario. Why? Because T6 screws suck, and so do the, the bits that you have to use. It doesn't matter what type of bit. I've stripped more T6 screws and ruined more T6 bits than anything else. I'm really happy that it's T8 that makes it really easy to take apart, considering we have a sandwich, con a sandwich construction liner lock. Uh, this guy is not going to be uh, difficult to disassemble, so I think that's fantastic. Um, let's go ahead. What is this little 
Get out of here. This isn't about you, debris. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness of this guy up against the para three. This guy is uh, fairly chunky. It's not massively, it's a little tiny bit thicker than the para three, but it's not insane. Sorry, this is, the knife is completely black and the background's black. I've got the exposure turned up a little bit. I hope you guys can see everything, but shadows are gonna make some shots a little bit more difficult. It is just slightly thicker than the Spyderco para three. Uh, let's do height and length up against two knives with awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about the PM2 and Para 3. As you can see here, it's not so much length that is the problem with this guy. And take the word problem with a grain of salt because for some people it's not going to matter. Lengthwise, it's a little longer than the Para 3. Um, not quite as long as the PM2. It's Honestly, it's almost, it's just slightly shorter than the PM2. Height though, <laughs> this area right here. Very tall, definitely taller than both the PM2 and Para 3. That's gonna be an issue for some people. This is a big knife. It's not overly thick, but it is big, it's fairly heavy, and it's definitely tall. It's not so much the flipper tab that's the problem here. It just in terms of, you know, room in the pocket, this guy's gonna be taking up a lot of room. For people who like to carry other objects in their designated knife po pocket, uh, yeah, this knife isn't gonna be friendly. If you're like me and you only carry a knife in your knife pocket, probably not gonna be that big of a deal, right? Um, let's go ahead and do, uh, blade stock thickness. I'm going to guess like other best decks I've handled that this guy's going to come in something like 130 thousandths other best decks, other off grid knives. Uh, okay. No, 120. So probably 125 thousandths. That's fine. That's a totally reasonable thickness. Wait, let's take a look at the internals real quick. We are looking at what looks like maybe possibly FRN. No. It's actually G10. You can see the fibers in it, right? This is G10. That's very cool. We have steel liners, G10 backspacer. It's also G10. You can see the fibers in that G10, right? On the inside, we do have some milling, which is great. Can you guys see that in there? Uh, milling on both sides, actually. I don't know if we're going to be able to get it. Well, just take my word for it. Let's, maybe from this side, can we see? Yeah, there you go. A little bit. Milling on both sides, which is great. Steel, G10, and steel for the construction on this guy. Still going to come in heavy. Let's make a guess here. 4.75 ounces is my guess. Holy crap, I was really wrong. <laughs> well, there's your proof that I, my number one, that I never weigh them before the review, and I just go off feel. For whatever reason, maybe the size of it or the, the mass, like the profile is throwing me off. It really doesn't feel that heavy. Wow, this is so much heavier than I thought. Okay, obviously this is gonna be too heavy for some people. And truthfully, despite the initial feeling, it really did not feel like it was that heavy. Despite the, uh, you know, the initial feeling of it, you know, being that, it is very heavy. It's actually slightly outside of the maximum range that I prefer to carry. It's right at the tippy top, right? Some other good things here. I don't want you guys to weigh this off because of the weight, but obviously people who've been used to carrying the Benchmade Bug Out or Para 3 Lightweight or other similar knives, right? This is not This is probably gonna be too big for you. People who cannot carry a blade that's this big in their area, right? Or they don't like excessively thick knives, right? Or if you're wearing light pant material day-to-day -day basis, if you like athletic shorts, fitted pants, things like that's not gonna work. Work pants, jeans, if you like full-size knives, this is something you're gonna be able to adapt to. The biggest problem for most people even people who like larger knives is going to be the height, especially if you carry other things in the pocket. Do with that information what you will. All right, let's go ahead and talk about profile here. First off, I love the honeycomb texture pattern on this. You'd think that it would be really aggressive, but truthfully, no, it's not. They're nicely, it looks like it would be sharp, but it's not. Let me get a side angle here. You can see there, it's really not sharp. They're just barely raised. They look a lot deeper than they actually are, but it's really nice to the touch. In and out of the pocket, honestly, I think some of the peel ply texturing that you'd get on the... Some of the cold steel, some of the big aggressive G10 cold steel knives, definitely going to be more aggressive. Some of the peel ply texturing on some Spyderco knives is probably going to fray your pants up a little bit more. I think these are shallow enough and smooth enough that it really isn't going to destroy your pants the way you might you might think. And the, the other great thing is ergonomically, this thing is a dream. Oh man, the amount, like this thing is locked in, fills the hand, it is comfortable. The pocket clip is, despite being raised a little bit, is not a hot spot. All the edges, everything nicely knocked down. This is so comfortable and it gives me that feeling of confidence 
with a knife in hand. This is a tool that is ready to be used. You are locked in and ready to go. I do not have a problem with the handle profile at all. I can get a full four finger grip on this with a little bit of room to spare so you can move around a little bit. Jimping is in the right spot, not aggressive. Just, oh man, I just, I just love it. This is great. Um, the blade steel on this guy is D2, which is fine considering the price range it comes in at. Um, we have a very tall Warncliffe blade with an enormous flat, carrying out about 70% the length of the blade. Nice big swedge out here, and then we've got a straight edge. Here recently, I've really come to enjoy, let me get out another one here. Uh, I've really come to enjoy this blade shape for EDC. And, uh, you know, knives like this to the QSP uh, Penguin. Um, this, these uh, Warncliffe style blades with just the straight edge, I really like them. I actually like them more than sheep's foot. I found that day to day what I do with knives, which is largely opening boxes, opening packages, even if I'm outside working, I found that this blade shape, being able to put my finger here and do draw cuts, I, blade shapes like this just work better for me. Um, it depends on what you're doing with your knives day to day, but for, for a day to day, you know, not necessarily indoor EDC. This is more of a, if you spend a lot of your time outside and you do general work tasks with your knife, this is going to fit in beautifully. This is the type of knife that I would think that, that there would no, there would be no part of my brain that would think twice about taking this out. If I was going to spend an entire day in my backyard doing home projects, little things, this is the type of knife that I'd bring out there. Um, the knife that's been beat on the most in my entire collection is actually my rat. And while I love this knife, I found that the fact that it does have belly actually keeps me from doing all that. It's fine getting into packages and stuff, but I just, this style of blade, when you have a functional, you know, not a super pointy tip, but you've got a tip that's good, you know, you can still do your breaching and puncture tasks, but then getting in and being able to draw and make a straight line or just carve into a package or a box real easily. Man, I love this, right? The blade is so tall despite the fact that the flat is so prominent, right? I mean, there's more flat than there is bevel to the cutting edge on this guy in terms of height. It still comes down to a reasonably thin edge. It's not insanely thin, but I'll let you guys look here. It's, I mean, it's not thick. It's not, it's not a laser beam or razor beam, whatever you want to call that, right? But gosh, it does get pretty darn thin and there's nothing in the cutting path, right? So your, your, you know, aggressive push cuts, right? Your hammer grip, your draw cuts, things like that. Uh, your, even your slicing stuff, it's going to be just fine. It really does have pretty good edge geometry because it's so tall. If this thing were much shorter, right? Kept the same thickness brought the handle profile down, brought everything down. Obviously, it'd be much thicker behind the edge. The flat would have to be less prominent. It'd have to be up here. But now the way that they did this is great. On top of that, the black wash on this guy looks really good. I think this is the only configuration you can get this knife in right now. It'd be really cool to see this in like a gray G10 or black with a tumbled blade um, or, uh, you know, maybe some OD green, something like that. But the black wash looks good. The blade is perfect all the way around. No sharp corners anywhere. The edge is done nicely. Nice and smooth. Glassy smooth edge. That's the way that I like it. Uh, cutting bevel is equal on both sides. Nothing that in picky enthusiasts such as myself would be able to nitpick. I love that they just put their logo on the blade and then D2. You don't have a bunch of crap, right? Patent numbers and serial numbers and all that crap. You don't have a website or any of that stuff. It's not on there. It's, it's nice. The blade looks good. Pivot on this side is simple, just the decorative side of the pivot. The adjustment head is over here. Uh, on the back, we do have a large lanyard hole, and there's a spot to mount the pocket clip for left-handed carry, even though this is a right-handed liner lock. Backspacer is black G10. They have the blacked-out look going all the way around. This, everything on this knife is, is black. Pocket clip is excellent. The screws are not recessed, but it definitely holds in place well. Three screws, plenty to hold the, the pocket clip in, and it is recessed into the G10, which means the pocket clip is not going anywhere. It also carries completely and totally deep, which I know a lot of people are going to like, and there's a continuous rise on the bill. I like more of a swoop, but this is fine. It's not going to fight varying thicknesses of pocket seam. It's simply going to rise to meet it, which is great. In and out of the pocket, this thing is very easy. It's simply the height, right, that makes it a little bit awkward in the pocket. But again, if it's the only thing you're carrying in your knife pocket, it's just not going to be a problem. The rest of this side is much the same as the front. We have a steel liner lock that is locking up at about 50% or so, which is fine. No blade play up, down, left, or right. I've never had blade play issues with these guys. The stop pin is, you can see it back in there, uh, really tucked away. And then there is some rounding or some shouldering. So it is wrap, wrapping nicely around the stop pin. 
And as per usual, the blade is completely and totally centered. Solid knife, absolutely. So again, little things like a nitpick. It's obviously gonna be too big for some people. It's gonna be too heavy for some people. The carry profile's a bit awkward with it being a little bit tall, right? This is gonna be illegal for some people considering the, um, you know, the height. Uh, I don't know that it needed three screws, but considering where they positioned everything, I mean, I understand it. I'm, I'm really more happy that it, it, it's T8, right? Um, gosh, it, it's a little bit wide. It's, it's going to be a little bit thick for some people. I mean, it's just a big knife, but considering where it's meant to be used, I think they really nailed it. I think, I think the, you know, the, this design, the intention or the design philosophy was like a, just a go-to tool that you would use primarily outside. And it's perfect for that, especially considering the blade. The blade is awesome. I, I mean, this seriously, this is what I would reach for is if I was gonna go out and spend a day in my backyard or if I was gonna go do some work outside somewhere. This is a great knife for that. Um, the, the weight's not gonna bother me, right? If I was gonna EDC this and I was just, I was gonna be, it was gonna be more, I was gonna be indoors throughout the day or I was gonna be going to a cocktail party wedding reception, or I was going to be in the office, probably wouldn't be the knife that I would, I would reach for, especially considering the pants I'd be wearing. But in jeans, yeah, no problem. Very satisfying action. Basically, yeah, completely drop shut. Love the honeycomb texture pattern on it. I think that's great. Ergonomics is just a dream. This thing, oh man, you could use this all day. No problem. You need to cut for 30 minutes straight and you're not going to wear gloves. No problem. Go at it with this guy. What's the price? The price on this thing is 80 bucks. That's higher than what we see in, this is just a little bit over what I'd consider budget knife territory. For me, a budget knife is anything under 75 bucks. I know everybody has a different definition of that. There is no specific definition of what a budget knife is. For some people, it's under five. Some people, it's under 20. Some people, it's under 50. The vast majority of the knife community will tell you it's under 50. On this channel, I say it's under 75. So this is a little bit over, right? You are getting best at quality. This is definitely a step up from what I expect from CJRB and Civivi, right? This is a much more durable knife than some of the knives you can get in that price range. Um, definitely a step up from knives that come in less expensive than that. Um, so it's in an interesting area. Um, this falls into the same range of quality uh, and fit and finish as some of your, you know, some of your 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 uh, Kershaw US knives, right? Um, this knife is made in China. It's not made in the United States. But uh, Bestec's quality is very, very good, right? Whether you're handling a less expensive, um, you know, Bestec manufactured knife uh, or a uh, more expensive Bestec manufactured knife, you know, you're going to feel that same type of quality. So I can kind of understand how they got there. I'd be a lot happier if this knife came in about 65 bucks. But I mean, how am I arriving at that price, right? What's my, what's the logic I'm applying there? I don't know. I think it's just, you know, when I think about knives in competition, right? If I'm thinking about Kershaw in, in, in competition with this, right? You can get a mostly US made knife. I, I, I don't know what percentage of Kershaw's parts are outsourced, right? But Kershaw is largely making their knives in the United States and you can get them for about the same price point. So I don't know, you know, in terms of quality, overall manufacturing quality, yeah. I mean, there are knives that cost double what this knife is and the same quality is present, right? But I suppose at 65 bucks, I'd be like, holy crap, 80 bucks, it's okay, it's all right. You're definitely getting an, an incredible knife and you're getting a pretty unique knife for 80 bucks, right? I think the people who pick this up will be happy with it. And for that reason, there's enough good here. I like this knife enough that I'm still gonna recommend it. Not quite where I can put it on my cheap knives that I, cause it's not cheap, right? It's not overly expensive, but it's not cheap. But it is gonna go on my recommended knives playlist. This is absolutely something I think you guys should check out. So like I said, links for this guy right down below and then links for off-grid knives in general right down below because they largely do a good job with everything that they make. And there are less expensive knives from them and more expensive knives, so feel free to check all of that stuff out. Thanks again to Off-Grid Knives for sending this guy in and letting me take a look at it. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.